Hello and welcome to This Is Technology. Everyone knows it's secular. As it's one secular? thing ends, it comes back around. So are we going back to mini discs? Oh my, do you have a mini disc player right below? Oh my, how did you have that so fast? Today, we're going to be making our predictions for 2025. If you recall, we did the same video last year and not to brag or anything, but I'm pretty sure we 100% were- 100% of what we said came absolutely true. Absolutely correct. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some predictions for next year's tech. What's gonna be the big, the hot, the best. First up, I have the death of the GPU as we know it. Next year, what? The GPU that you know and love will uh -huh. cease to exist. Jensen's about to roll up to your house and say, give me back my GPUs. Big, bulky GPUs are going to be a thing of the past. GPUs are getting too big. They're getting too power hungry. 2025 GPUs will die because as of the evidenced 15, by the major new launch of a GPU in 2025. Got it. Yeah. Okay. 2025 is the mark in which 2028 we will decide if you are right or not. Is yeah. that really what you're okay? Well, that's how the future works. That's a my bold dude. prediction, my that's friend. That's how the future I don't works. Think that's the way this game's supposed so, to work. So the big rumors about the 5090 is that it needs yet another new power supply because it is gonna be so power hungry. Now, do you want to spend a billion dollars on a on a graphics card? That's gonna be the bubble that pops. And instead, everyone's going to be using integrated GPUs that are built into your APUs, your SOCs, your ABCs, your XYZs. I don't necessarily think you're wrong, but you're saying 2025. We're talking about 2025 predictions. And GPUs are not going away in 2025. 2030, maybe I could buy it. Oh, it's look, not, there's I'm literally saying, new stuff coming my out. My tech prediction yeah. is that the 5090 is the gonna be the, be the bubble that pops. That's mm. my prediction. I don't think so. This video was sponsored by Zlul. I'm in my glasses era. All right? It's not just because they make me look super stylish. I've been playing a ton of World of Warcraft. You have? Lately. What? Yeah. Are you kidding me? And that means hours and hours and hours of screen time. Mostly after the sun goes down. Unfortunately, that means there's a lot of blue light that I'm taking in. Blue light is defined as wavelengths between 400 and 500 nanometers. And it can cause eye strain. It could also trick your brain into having trouble falling asleep. And thank God, we have technology so I don't have to stop playing WoW. That's where these glasses from Zilu come in. They have blue light filtering built right in the lenses so I can keep gaming and rest easy. And not sure how it works, but watch this laser demo. But if gaming is still making your eyes hurt after all of that, you might need to get your eyes checked. It might mean the difference between playing on low settings or ultra. Yeah. When I was younger, I did not realize why everyone was so hyping up HD and stuff. I'm like, oh, all it's the same. Because I needed glasses, I didn't realize it. Get your eyes checked, get a nice up-to-date prescription, my friends, and your glasses will help you see the world. And once you know your prescription, it's super easy to get exactly what you need from Zulu. It works on single vision, progressive, and readers. All you have to do is pick your favorite frames, customize the lenses to your needs, and your new glasses will be on the way. And you don't even need to leave your home if you know your prescription, but make sure you got an up-to-date prescription. Ready to take your gaming to the next level and look incredibly cool while doing it? Well, check out the link in the description. And thank you again to Zulu for sponsoring this episode of This Is Most Important. Importantly, giving the Banjo Boys a new look for the new season. Oh, I look good. I got one for you that's actually quite related. 2025 is the year that you're gonna have AI all up in your face. Now, let me wow. clarify, wow. because you can say that about the last couple of years. So the last couple of years, the vast majority of AI, whether it be chatbots or features or whatever the case is, has been running in the cloud. 2024 is the year that we start to see more stuff running on your device, whether it's Apple intelligence, whether it's some of the Android stuff, whether it's the Copilot Plus stuff built into Windows 11. The idea that you are going to be doing more AI processing on your computer feels, feels like a no brainer. 2025 is the year that everyone's gonna get their shit together in a pretty major way. You're going to have so many AI features in all kinds of apps and on your device and everything that they're not really gonna be AI features anymore. They're just going to be features. My argument against that, cause yeah. like we know that's gonna happen. I agree with you on the Apple side because they came out the gate committed to on device stuff. However, think about all, all the money that Microsoft and Google and all them have invested into AI servers and data yeah. centers. They're not just gonna be like, you know what? We're gonna turn these off tomorrow. They need time to build these, the, uh, all these models for all these new features, yeah. which means it has to go on, like you're using it on your device. I think right now, most of the big tech companies are well underway of preparing the models that will run your device next year. The reason why I think that this is gonna be a thing for 2025 is that you know what doesn't burn you a pile of money? If you run it on someone else's device, it doesn't cost you anything at that point anymore. So that's my prediction. I feel really good about it. Super no brainer. AR is finally gonna get good. Excuse me? Yeah, you look at something like, uh, the Vision Pro. The only person who uses it is Ken, and look at the way he looks like on a plane with this thing. I think 
we're gonna start getting more and more close to something like a streamlined piece of eyewear. Like the Meta Orion headset or the Snapchat spectacles, which I also got to try recently. If you think about the sort of the idea of glasses, if you take the Meta Ray-Bans like sort of the base case for it, they have a camera inside, which is nice. They have actually really good microphones. The fact that they do all of this and they're like only a little bit more expensive than just a regular pair yeah. of Ray-Bans. Like that's a great start, but you need more, you need a screen, you need more extra stuff to be able to make it to the step of AR. Yeah, and I think that we're not, I think we're not far off. I think we have a lot of the pieces in place. The sure. Meta Orions are way better. Like the Meta Orions that I tried, they have a little puck, but it's wireless. And the thing is, while it's a prototype and while Meta would probably have to sell for like 10 grand if they wanted to ship it right now, that is probably the coolest piece of tech I have tried in the last like, five years. What else do we have that's external that's around in our pockets a lot? Phone. And I'm not talking about a phone. Glasses case? Smartwatches. And then if it's beaming the signal to your glasses, one, the power consumption of a gl of the glasses has to be way less. So the battery itself on the, on the, the glasses could be much smaller. We talk about like how phones are so boring. I think we're in a spot where we can make like a wearable ecosystem actually func functional. I know I'm not pitching that like we ditch phones yeah, we should but not like, ditch phones. Because like if regular glasses have mm -hmm. the functionality of like a Vision Pro, yeah. that's pretty cool. I think we're gonna take a big step forward. I agree. I'll actually completely back you yeah. up on this. I think it's legit. If you have a regular pair of glasses, this essentially is totally normal in every way. You'll I never forget someone's name again because it can look at it and be like, oh, that's, that's. No, no, we don't need that part. No, 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 no. This one, this next one, I'm gonna need to refer to my notes for because I think you're gonna disagree with me. The Switch 2 will be good. Nope. It's gonna be good. I We're think it's gonna... gonna sell a lot and I think it's gonna be not good. Nintendo have been dropping the ball when it comes to Everything? some truly nefarious business practices that I do not support. I love Nintendo games. I like Nintendo hardware, but Nintendo as a company operate with such absolute, just like attacks on the community. And I, I feel like I morally don't want to support. They like, have the business I, equivalent of just spitting in every customer's face. Yes, if we can take our ethical hats off for a second, cause I feel like most of us leave our ethical hats off the table oh. all the time. Anyway. Oh, we wanna. Oh, good Lord. Okay, well, that's not an ethical hat. For all the downsides when it comes to Nintendo at the moment, the Switch 2 is going to be the easiest success ever. People literally just want a Switch that runs games that actually work. The Switch 1, for as great as it is and has been, it's super old. Like, we just need a new version. Can I tell you a story about our editor, Will? Will is a giant Nintendo fanboy. True. As soon as uh, the music app dropped, I yeah. just text him, I go, I know you downloaded it. And, and he's like, yeah, I downloaded it. Switch 2 is gonna be a success. It's gonna finally come out in the year of 2025. And we're all gonna begrudgingly give the big Nintendo a bunch of money. And they're gonna use that money to sue your favorite YouTubers out yeah. into oblivion. That's what they're doing with your money, guys. But you agree with me because you hate Nintendo and everything that they stand for, so. Yeah. You also hate fun. My next prediction, 2025, is the year of the haptic. This is the year that your the ga that gaming companies come out and touch you. Gaming has plateaued. Razer's already come out with a pad for haptics where they're yeah. actually integrating it into games. In your butt. So, yep, you definitely feel it in your butt. I feel like this is going to be something that companies are going to start doing more and more of. We saw it with the DualSense controller, which is terrific. I will say that as much as I think that the DualSense is the best, the Switch has had HD rumble since the beginning and it is actually really good. But nothing ever uses it, so it doesn't matter. What's your actual prediction besides just year of the half? I don't know the chicken or the egg on this one. Razer's execution of it was fine. Fine. If developers embrace this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and start, if there's actually ways to do this that are sure. not gimmicky. The problem is that the stuff that requires you to put something on your face, uh, the vest, that's a little bit over the top. But controllers, building into the things that you're already wear, uh, like sort of using, whether it be your headset, whether it be your glasses, whether it be your controller, I feel like it makes sense. It does immerse you more in the game. I'm with you that this is a cool idea. I do feel like we're a little bit farther away than a year. I think we'll probably see more haptic stuff next year. I just think that's a great slogan. Year of the haptics, come touch me. 2025 is the beginning of the next generation of gaming. Now that might sound like a broad proclamation that may not be followed through. But let me give you my pitch. In the year of 2025, I believe that we are going to get some kind of confirmation that they are working on the next version of the Series X, as well as a handheld Xbox. My bet would be either in the middle of the year or at the very end of the year, like what they did with the Game Awards, where they just surprised said, hey, by the way, Series X, the thing. The Switch 2 
is going to have roughly 15 minutes in the spotlight before Microsoft's already turned the page and say, hey, guess what? New Xbox is coming in the next year or two. I think this can be really a smart move from Microsoft's perspective because PlayStation have just brought out a PS5 Pro. They cannot go out and hype a PS6 yet. Otherwise, everyone who bought a $700 PS5 Pro or is planning to is going to get super, super grumpy. So Sony have to keep their dang mouths shut about any kind of next generation stuff, which means that it is open season for Microsoft. Yes, they're going to hurt some of their Series X and Series S sort of sales as soon as they do this. I don't think it matters. They need to go all in on this next generation, make it not only bad and great, but also importantly, get out a year at least ahead of Sony. If they're able to do that, then I think that they could flip the script and have a big lead for the next generation. But what if it was the exact opposite of that? Why, why, why would it be the opposite of that? What are you talking about? More and more TVs are coming out with- Do not say the C word, With Matt. cloud gaming no! built into it. No! We have AV1 encoding, which is regularly available. No. It's easier no. than ever to stream no. games. Stop at it. super low bit rates. Oh we can stream so mad right now. super high quality at like five megabits, which is like it's natural, DSL. Though. It's not the video quality that's the problem with no, it's gaming. No, the latency. It's the latency, it's latency and the friggin' like you drop a few frames and suddenly like you like it hitches and stuff. Like cloud gaming is not a good experience on almost anything right now. The reason that Xbox with the Series X did this, where they went to the six nanometer, is to put out more server blades to do X Cloud. We have wired gigabit ethernet here in the office. We're not that far away from a data center. I still find Xbox Cloud Gaming to be too inconsistent. It's fine for me. Because you're a pleb. It's fine if I am in an emergency situation. Otherwise, not okay. I'm not telling you to throw away your Xbox. Every TV in your house could have an Xbox now. What's your prediction? Is this your prediction? That but cloud gaming is going to not be bad It's going to keep going. It's going to keep getting better. Maybe this is the year that we see the stick from Xbox. You're making me lose brain cells right now. Yeah. Moving on to my other text prediction. This is the year of gaming on a Mac. All right? <laughs> you mean every prediction since uh, roughly 2012? We have Cyberpunk coming to Macs now. They did it the right way. All right? Yeah. It is not an uh, Apple Store exclusive. The M4 is pretty damn powerful. The Mac Mini is the smallest console in the world. I will say that most of the games that they announced at the Keynotes are paid for from Apple. Which is what I've been saying for the longest time of just Apple needs to just start shoveling money in uh, at companies I mean, I do, to, yeah. to just bring it over. For 600 bucks, all right? You got a PS5 Pro level uh, gaming computer. I don't, don't think that's true. That's gonna destroy the PS5 Pro. You are incorrect if you think a $600 Mac Mini is going to be more powerful than a PS5 Pro. I think it is. What Apple does is they pay some big guys like Kojima and say, come on over, come on over, the water's fine. And then Kojima says to his friends, he says, hey, Apple's treating me pretty good over there. And so like when they tell two friends, I'm sitting here and saying, you know what? I, Resident Evil Village plays pretty darn good on my <laughs> Mac. If I convert even two people to go try Resident Evil on my Mac, then, then there will be three people who bought the damn game. And then, they and then they oh tell two people each. Are you, is this a pyramid scheme? First of all, only a small percentage of overall PCs are Macs, right? So you're talking about a small percentage of the market. How many people who own a Mac actually game? I'm gonna say it's not that big of a number, which means that as much as you might have the world's best cyberpunk experience on a Mac mini, it's still only gonna sell a few thousand copies, which means that the only reason developers are gonna support Mac is either if they're already making an iPhone version of the game, it takes them like 10 minutes to make the Mac version, it's or the, the Apple toolkit. dump a bunch of money on them. The porting toolkit. What's the point? if all you do is you sell 10 more copies of it. That's not because worth it. there's no extra work involved. I disagree. Even if it's simple, it's still extra work. You still have to continue to QC it. Just or say, just be Blizzard and have the player base QC everything. Okay. I have a different Apple prediction for you. Every one of your predictions here has been the most lukewarm. I'm making predictions that are going to come true. 2025 is the year that our friend Timmy Cook is going to release a brand new form factor of iPhone that will fail just like the mini did. Let me elaborate. We all know Matt and I are mini boys. Mini boys? Okay, yeah, I don't like that. The iPhone mini was a terrific device. It was a unique thing in the marketplace. Very few compromises compared to the big boy and it was the cheapest phone. They grim reapered it. The problem with the iPhone mini was that no one wanted a small phone, but Apple wanna sell a phone at all these prices. So what did they do after? They did the iPhone plus, which is literally the mini except reversed and wrong. My thought. My pitch, my prediction is that they're going to try again with the mini formula, but instead of making it a small physical size, they're gonna make it 
Slim. They're going to be an iPhone 17 Slim. It comes out 2025. I also read Mac rumors. Predictions are not like completely made up BS. It is based on some speculation or rumor. Mm. The iPhone 17 Slim is going to replace the iPhone Plus. It is going to be a medium-sized phone, but super thin. But my prediction is also this thing is going to bomb. I am excited to try a new form factor. I applaud Apple for trying new things. I applaud every company who tries new things as long as it's not complete garbage. But I don't think that people want a smaller, thinner phone. I think people want 6.9 inches in their pocket all day long. They want the thickness. They want the longevity. I think that this thing is gonna be cool. I'm very excited to get my hands on it when they announce it in 11 months or whatever. But I think it's gonna be a failure and Apple are going to have to go back to the drawing board and just keep making the same thing over and over again, which is thoroughly great and boring. My next prediction hinges completely Hinge? on your tech prediction. I think this okay. is the year that Tim Cook goes away. Matthew! Have you Have you seen the rumor? The Mac event was one big event and they just chopped out all of Tim Cook. How dare you? Do not take my Timmy Cook away from me. Ooh. He is a treasure and, and I will not have it. As much as I would love it to be Craig, I don't think it's gonna be Craig. Why? What's wrong with Timmy Cook? He, well, he's getting old. No, he's not. I think Tim's gonna retire. I don't think they're gonna fire Tim. He's in great shape, have man. Have you seen him when he's got the- Absolutely. He's, dude, he's jacked. I wanna see a boxing match between Tim Cook and Logan Paul. I don't think that's true. I, I would take money against that. No way. I think Timmy Cook's I, not going anywhere for a while. I actually like Tim Cook a lot, in all seriousness. You hear stories about him waking up at 3 a.m. and responding to emails like, like I, But that's I, exhausting after a no, while. No, of course, of course. But I feel like Tim Cook is a guy who has made running Apple his entire personality. And I feel like when he retires, he's gonna have to find some crazy nonsense to get into. But like, Tim Cook is not going anywhere. And if he is, I'd be sad because I legitimately like Tim Cook a lot. And everyone goes, oh, Steve Jobs this, Steve Jobs that. Yeah, Steve Jobs is the guy who walks in and goes, hey, that's Steve, hey, that's Steve. Yeah, make this thing I better. Like, I like Tim, Tim Cook's Cook guy who goes, like hey, yeah. let's figure out how to do this thing. Hey, let's make a lot of money along the way. Let's be really smart about X, Y, Z. But also Not I feel anywhere. like Tim, Tim's a nice guy and maybe he would make room for the next person. It's a certain point. I just don't think next year. I think five years minimum. No, we'll find out. Let us know what your tech predictions are in the comments. Wait, 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 wait. Can we talk about Austin didn't mention folding phones in this video? Every phone cut, will fold if you, hard, if you just bend cut it in half. Okay, all right.